many of the things that we are worried about are actually happening faster than we originally thought. If you are from British Columbia, you've seen the devastation to your forests here, haven't you? If you're from Alaska or further north, you've seen changes in your communities and the need for relocation of Alaskan villages. And if you're from other places, you've seen that there are consequences that are sometimes unimaginable. Al Gore did us a great favor, I think, in that he, through telling a story in a very powerful and evocative way, finally got the attention of a, of a large amount of people that weren't originally part of the choir. And it was the medium and how he told the story that started to change people's minds. But I always say that I think he stopped the movie too short. And the part that he should have focused quite a bit of, of the movie on was all the stuff that was in the credits at the end. All the, all the strategies and things that we need to do differently. And really that's where we pick up the story. When we start talking about living buildings and living communities, we're saying thank you, Al, and here's what we need to do about it. Here's how we need to design our communities and our buildings to address this challenge. And to borrow actually the words of the Premier, we need to be agents of hope. And a big part of it is we need to really start communicating the truth. And I don't think that we're really doing that. This is not a time when we have the luxury to not communicate the truth. And I also think that when you're speaking the truth, you at the same time need to offer people a compelling, inspiring vision of the future. You need to help people imagine what is possible. But here's the thing. There's two reactions that I see happening, and I think that neither reaction is particularly healthy. One is sometimes we are so afraid to despair, we are so afraid to have pain, we don't want to sit with pain, so we go on, of, even though we know information, we drown it out and we go about our merry ways and have false hopes, the Jiminy Cricket hopes, and delusion, and act as if there's no problem. Or, we despair too much, we lose all hope, we become bitter, cynical, angry, and I think, ineffective. And there's a, there is a duality there, because on the one hand, we know that we are preparing for some difficult times ahead, and resilience is important, right? We have to think about what that really means in terms of community resilience and individual personal resilience, and what it really means. But on the other hand, we can't dwell and live only in this place of despair. And we need to really talk about how we have a, an incredibly different fundamental perspective about change. And there's, there's a great article that talks about all these issues uh, by a, a gentleman named Derek Jensen. It's called Beyond Hope. And he means a very, very particular thing by the term beyond hope. And I don't think he is really meaning we need to give up hope, we're hopeless. But what he is talking about is we need to give up false hopes that allow us to be inactive, that allow us to not do anything. Technology is gonna save us, the government will save us, the free market will save us. And when we have those false hopes, we use our hope as an excuse for inaction. Well, that's not going to cut it. We need real hope based on what we can do, that we know how to do, and based on us getting off our asses and doing something. Now, in this article, Derek describes how when he is talking about this idea of being beyond hope, some people say to him, well, why don't you just kill yourself then? If things are so damn bad, why don't you just give up? Because it's hopeless. And he has an answer which I think is telling. And he says that the answer is that life is really, really good. And I am a complex enough being that I can hold in my heart the understanding that we are really, really fucked. That's his word. And at the same time, that life is really, really good. I am full of rage, sorrow, joy, love, hate, despair, happiness, satisfaction, dissatisfaction, and a thousand other feelings. 
We are really fucked. Life is still really good. <laughs> If you've had a real loss in your life and you have reached a point where you are dealing with it, then you have learned to sit with your pain. And it doesn't mean that you then have less love to give to your child or to your friend. You have more because you're not hiding and denying a part of you that is very real. And we need to, on one hand, sit with these issues and not bury them or hide them or pretend they're not there. We need to sit with them every day and we need to have a hell of a good time loving each other at the same time and do whatever we can now to be in the moment and enjoy each other, right? That's hard, but that's what leadership is.